What's up guys, it's Brian here from Lake Kicker Scoop and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. Well, you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. And I got a really short video for you today, but I promise you there's a good message here behind it. And if you can't tell, I'm at the beach. I'm down on Ocracoke Island here on the Outer Banks of North Carolina, kind of where I grew up, if you will. Fishing, shrimping, scuba diving, whole nine yards. We were diving here back in the 80s as well. It's kind of where I cut my teeth as a as a seaman, if you will. But um, we're down here for a family vacation. My wife's father recently passed away, so we come down to bury him uh, not too far from here, about an hour away. And so while we were down here, we decided, hey, let's just go ahead and drive on down to the beach, spend a week down there. We brought my mother-in-law down with us. Got the kids out here playing, as you can see. But we're just relaxing. We're out on the beach, relaxing, having a great time. And it started making me think about time and how time relates to scuba diving. And so I recently had a conversation with another big scuba YouTuber on here, and I was asking him about his analytics compared to ours and how many of his viewers were actually certified divers versus non-certified, and we were comparing the numbers. And it broke down to basically this. 90% of our viewers are scuba divers, 10% are not. In his case, 10% of his viewers are scuba divers, 90% are not. And he's a scuba instructor too. And so we started talking and, and I was asking, why do we think that the numbers are what they are? Why do we think that they've got so many viewers that are non-divers versus us having all the viewers that are divers? And a lot of it's geographical location. There's not many places to go diving, or maybe it's not in the best uh, financial environment, if you will. Maybe a lot of people in those areas don't have the best finances or whatnot. But I started thinking about time, and I really started to break down why people don't go diving, why they would rather spend their time here on YouTube and watch us go dive versus them getting out and diving. And there's really two things, time and money, obviously. Well, the money thing I can fix for you. Money's pretty simple. First of all, you don't have to have the top of the line gear. Most divers do not go out, buy rebreathers, buy doubles, buy side mount, and start diving. They go out, they get a budget line gear, they get certified, and they dive their local environments the best they can at a very inexpensive rate. Most time, local environments are 100% free. And they build up their skill levels. They save up, and then they take more classes, they get better gear, and they go out and dive. Now, notice I said, better gear. That might not be the best way to describe their second set of gear that they get. I want to call it more appropriate gear for the type of diving that they're wanting to do. You see at the open water level, you don't have to have the best of the best. You don't have to have the, the gear that you're going to use for tech diving or the gear that I use for public safety. You just got to have gear that's safe to use and is simple to use and that allows you to dive in conditions for which you were trained in at your open water level. So you don't have to have a lot of money. Typically, a lot of gear is expensive, but there's some great budget kits out there that you can get, especially from your local dive center, that will allow you to go diving for a dirt cheap cost. Now, that being said, let's talk about time. How do we make time to go diving? Why does people claim they don't have time? First of all, if you're like me, and you're bored, you're sitting at home, you'll either log on to your phone on TikTok or you'll log on to your phone on YouTube, just like you're probably doing now, and you'll start watching your favorite YouTuber, and next thing you know, two, three hours go by, and all you've done is spent time on YouTube. You know, if I've got two or three hours to, to kill, if I'm not spending time with my family, I'm out diving. I go dive. I dive seven days a week. Yes, I get it. I'm in the industry. That, that's a given. But I dive. If I'm bored, me and Tessa, we'll go dive. We'll go grab our gear, we go to a local lake, our lake, Lake Hickory, we jump in, we go dive. So you have time to do this. You just gotta put forth the effort to do it. All right, so we understand you don't have to have a lot of money to do it. Number two, you gotta have time, but you've got to be able to make time. Now the cool thing about this family vacation that we're on, it's with family. I'm here with family. Just like when I go dive and I take Tessa with me, I'm diving with family. I'm getting to share that experience with her. I'm getting to go out and enjoy my time with her. 
father-daughter dates, whatever you want to call them. But we're doing it. We're getting out there and we're diving. Doesn't really cost us nothing at this point. We both own our gear. At the most, it costs us an airfield. Yeah, once again, I get it. I own the dive shop. Airfields are nothing to me. However, for you, what's an airfield? Most shops near us charge anywhere from $6 to $10 for an airfield. $10 for 30 minutes to an hour with your kid underwater, enjoying life, well worth it to me. So much worth it. Matter of fact, I'm kind of a cheapskate. I'm perfectly happy spending $10 on an airfield and spending an hour underwater with my daughter and spending time with her than trying to save up two, three, maybe $4,000 to take her on a warm tropical destination, which is fun, but at least I'm spending time. I'm getting out there. I'm making the best of my time. I'm being able to budget what I can do and we go dive and we enjoy life. And that's the message that I want to get across in this video. This is just a thought provoking video for you. You got to be able to make time to go diving. We know that you got to be able to budget and there are some great kits that you can get. I'm going to give you a pointer on how you can get a budget kit that is safe to use here in just a minute. Make the time, make the budget, and you can do this as well. You can get out there and go diving dirt cheap and safely. So how do we do that? How do we get that dirt cheap gear that is safe to use? Well, first of all, it's all safe or it wouldn't be sold on the market. But go by your local training center and ask them what gear they're rotating out. You see, every two or three years, dive shops will take all their rental gear and they'll sell them out dirt cheap. And you know it's taken care of because it's rental, right? So they keep it up. They got to keep it up for insurance purposes. It's good gear, but they like to replace it and bring newer gear that's on the market into the rental pool. So go by and see what your local training center is selling out to replace. You can get some really good quality gear, dirt cheap costs, because trust me, it's rental gear. That shop's already got their money out of it. They're gonna sell it dirt cheap. But guys, that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you got the message. I hope you understand what this is about. Get out there and go dive. When you go dive, you're increasing your knowledge, your skills, your equipment, and your experience. You guys, if you like this video, big thumbs up, definitely share it for me. If you want more thought provoking videos like this, drop me a comment of a topic that you would like for me to talk about and I'll do my best to make a video for you. But I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. I am going to spend the rest of this week with my family out here on the beach and take the time and effort to do something with my family. Guys, that's gonna be it for today. Take care, God bless, and we'll see you in the next video.